the Lord sent out 72 disciples to their first mission trip. And they uh, returned from mission trip rejoicing over this outcome, the results they had. You know, they experienced spiritual warfare against demons. And demons were totally defeated. The disciples were victorious. Casting out demons, healing sick people. You know, just like what Jesus did in the New Testament, they performed supernatural miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome? Isn't it great? And they were all hyped up. And they were full of joy. It was, it was amazing, amazing mission. It was amazing experience. It was very, very successful ministry. The mission they experienced. And they're all excited to talk about this mission stories to Jesus. Jesus, here we are and we have the stories to tell you. You know, for those people who went to mission trip, some of you can relate yourself with these disciples. I have seen uh, many people experiencing this, this grace. It's very, something very uh, special, like extraordinary things happening in the mission field. During the mission trip, I have experienced it as well. A number of them. And those experiences can be you know, can make you very joyful. It will be very delightful, inspirational. You know, last week you guys had a uh, pastor uh, Kenneth as a guest speaker, right? I'm not really sure uh, he talked about this mission trip we went together, but in year I don't know, in year 2003, it's been a long time. But we went to uh, this city called Mekinsk. Uh, located in northern Kazakhstan and we experienced something very extraordinary well we brought this whole band of praise team right we had like 11 people and they're all like band like praise band uh, and with the sound equipment we brought drum sets electric guitar keyboard amplifiers microphones and we were planning to have sort of this like big massive a concert praise concert on the very last day of our mission trip so that was our goal that was our plan like gathering people like as many as we can so like we like, you know like we're like a hill song or i don't know like that's our goal and evangelize so we rented the school auditorium and we, we started inviting people in the morning Hey, come on, like we gotta have this and flyers and everything was so smooth, like rehearsal was great. But all of a sudden, like 30 minutes prior to the event, the sound system, they stopped working. Amplifiers, microphone, electric guitar, keyboard, none of them, like they're not working. We found out the electricity uh, transformer got toasted. It just burned and it's not working anymore. And there's no way to fix this. And, and it starts in 30 minutes. So what should we do? What did you do like, in, in that kind of situation? I don't know. Like there's, there's nothing you can do. And it's starting in 30 minutes. And it's just like, you know, panic attack. Will go nuts, crazy, but somehow we decided to just you know what? Like, there's nothing we can do. There's no radio shop or there's no Best Buy, there's no Walmart. There's nothing we can do. So we decided to just hey, you know, can we pray? So we're just laying our hands on this electric device, the transformer, and we start to pray. Everybody gather and let's pray. We pray for it for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, out loud. Like, you know, we need this. Otherwise, like the concert, I don't know. Like, so we pray for it. But guess what? It worked. And there's nobody can explain this logically. You know, all the members, we remember this story as electricity uh, story. And we actually have a little like DVD clip. How it happened? We all testified.
identified it as this is work of God. God worked. The power of prayer, power of the Holy Spirit, somehow he fixed this problem. And we all witnessed it. We all experienced it. And this is just one of the many stories that, that I experienced during the mission trip. So God allows people to experience the supernatural miracles sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Especially during the mission trip. And those stories give me a, such a joy. And I love to share these stories. And I will share this story to, to other people. So also people know that, hey, you know, there's a power in, in God. And God can do things like that. You know, power of prayer. Power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. You know, God is living God. In the same way, those disciples had this kind of amazing, amazing story to tell during this mission trip. So they, so they returned with a great joy. And they want to share this story with other people, like people around them. They said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They were excited to share this story, but look at it. How he responded to it. Jesus has such a weird response. They came to Jesus to share these great stories from mission. And Jesus supposed to say, great work, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Awesome job, well done. That should be natural response. But Jesus has such a weird and awkward response for them. Verse 18 says, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't click very well. He did not say, any, say anything to compliment them. He did not say anything to encourage them. What he said was like this. I already knew what, what would happen to you guys. I already saw Satan falling. You know, I was the one giving you the power and authority over you. I already knew everything. So it's not really a big deal. You know, your reports, your story does not surprise me. Kind of, well, that kind of attitude. Now look at verse 20. We see Jesus even Sort of like rebuking them. Let 20 verse, verse 20, let's read it together. 3, 2, 1. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. What is it trying to say here? Do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you. You know, spirit, the demons submitting to them, that was the greatest news ever. It was a spectacular, marvelous, magnificent, uh, magnificent story, the victory. They were fully rejoicing because of that. But Jesus is telling them, do not rejoice, do not celebrate. Stop doing that. Isn't it weird? If I were Jesus, right, I would give them a big hug and say, great work, awesome, well done, disciples, I bless you. But Jesus is telling me, no, do not do this. Do not rejoice. Well, let's see. What's, what's, what's the significance of this? What Jesus wants to teach them here in this passage? Let's get into this. See, there are so many things that make our life very rejoiceful. Many things to rejoice over in our life. What make us smile? What make us rejoice? What make you guys smile? What make you rejoice? Celebrate. Getting a new car? Getting a promotion, winning a lottery, getting a good grade, 
Those things will give you joy, don't they? Having a great boyfriend, girlfriend, getting married, that will give you joy, don't they? From ministry standpoint, what would give you joy? Those people who are into this serving this church as a, as a leaders, praise team members, as a teacher, what would give you joy as you are serving the church, as you are serving youth group, as you are serving the children, as you are serving this EM community? For me, when people get to know Christ, people get to have positive changes in their life. When people get in, in encouraged and empowered through this ministry, people are getting involved with the ministries and mission. People becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. And that made me joyful. That is a great pleasure and delight. It's a joy. And that this is my prayer. If that happens, I want to celebrate, I will rejoice. You do the same thing, right? If member praise praise him, it would be awesome. People are so engaged into worship, and they're like, you know, they're 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 long, you know, they're they're they're, they're praising God with their heart, and they're 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 singing top of their voice and and praising God. Wouldn't they give you joy, right, Kevin? Not really. Yeah, I would love to. What about youth group? When people are changing and, and they're saying, you know what, teacher? I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to read his word. I want to be changed. Wouldn't they be a joy for you? Children's church. The, the, the little kids that they, they say, you know, I love Jesus Christ. I want to learn more about Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. If they say that, it will be joy for you. Of course it is. But you know what? Today's text, if you read and if you study this, meditate upon this, even those beautiful prayer requests, beautiful goals, beautiful plan that we have, they cannot be the ultimate reason for us to be joyful. There's more fundamentally important things to rejoice. The very first and foremost, the initial joy is supposed to be the God's grace. God's grace in us, that is the very first fundamental, essential joy we're supposed to have. Without this, the other things are not as important. What is this? Your name is written in heaven. That's grace. We do not deserve it, but God's grace is upon us. Through Christ Jesus, your name is written in the book of salvation. That's grace. We do not create this, we do not manufacture this. God freely given us through Christ. We're saved by His grace. And grace is given to us as a free gift. The disciples came back focusing on what they had done by the name of Jesus. Even though it's done by the name of Jesus, Jesus quickly realigned their focus not on what they had done, but on what God had done for them. You know, in this passage, Jesus wants to teach them that God's grace is the greatest miracle of, of all, and we need to, they need to celebrate it. God's grace upon them. See, Jesus is Realigning the priority of their rejoicing, the rejoicing order at least. There is a priority list for having rejoice. And 
the very first one is not the victory of the devil. Successful ministries, successful mission work, getting a good result from your ministry and mission, they are not the first priority for you to be rejoiced. And sometimes it's so easy for us to focus on the things that we do and achieve. Even in this ministry realm, we lose focus on God's grace. Instead of focusing on God's grace, we start to say things. We can do this, we can do that. This is how much we can do this, this is how much we can't. This is how much we did, how much we accomplished. Jesus wants us to know that our work, our ministry, mission, our life itself are nothing apart from God's grace. Grace of God. Grace of God is number one priority. When we have that, right, when we acknowledge God's grace, when we accept God's grace as a very first priority in our life, Life becomes very, very different, it changes. You know, joy in God's grace is not temporal. You know, things in this world, it's, everything is temporal. Do you, do you understand temporary? Everything that we do is temporary. The money that you make today will be gone tomorrow. The relationship that you are having right now it might be, it looks really nice and sweet and rosy, but who knows? Everything that we build, everything that we do here, it fades away. Nothing is eternal. Nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. It'll be gone. You know, disciples, they were joyful, right? Why? Because they were victorious. Because they had done something really great. They experienced something really awesome, and that made them joyful. You understand that? They witnessed something really awesome. See, we've done this in the name of Jesus Christ. We experienced it. They were victorious. But remember what they had done when Jesus was arrested. When Jesus was on the cross, what did they do? Did they have joy? Were they rejoicing? No. They had fear in their hearts. They were all scattered. They all betrayed Christ. Their joys were gone. You might feel, I might feel victorious right now because I went to mission trip last week. Because I have seen so many things changed. I was challenged, encouraged, empowered because of the thing that we did. Because of the thing that God has shown to me. You might be very spiritually victorious. You might be very spiritually superior right now. Because you had this great retreat or worship service, the, the Christian book that you just read, you attend this great conference and you learn so much and you are equipped and empowered and you might say, this is great, hallelujah, I'm victorious. After today's worship service, you might feel like you have defeated Satan. I am high right now. I am pumped up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm, great, I'm, I'm doing great. Feel victorious. You might feel superior, but can you guarantee tomorrow? Can you guarantee tomorrow, next week, you will be the same? What about those times when you feel down, when you feel like you are being defeated by Satan? Feel like you are not doing well? Feeling this spiritual stagnation, hitting the rock bottom. There's nothing good happening in my life. You're not getting anywhere. There's no fruit coming out of your ministry. Then, 
what should you do? You stop rejoicing. And some people stop rejoicing because there is no joy in their life. Because they don't see good fruits. They don't see good results. Satan is not falling anymore, but I am. No more victories. Overwhelmed by this, the temptations. No more victories. Miserable. No joy. You see, ministries are out of control. People are being disrespect, disrespectful to you. People are complaining in that kind of circumstance. Serving church, serving kingdom of God, things are going really miserable sometimes. It becomes a burden. No joy. You feel like you are on the crucifixion. A lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of scars. We don't find joy in us. We stop rejoicing. And Jesus is pointing that out specifically. See, even though your ministry is not going well, even things are not going well, there's a reason to be rejoiced. We can truly rejoice in our life when we accept the grace of God, trusting that God loves me no matter what, trusting that He wrote my name in the book of salvation. Those people who rejoice, who can truly rejoice, they're the people who believe in this. Because this won't change at all. This is permanent. This is everlasting. It's not like you're not going to have an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes like people treat you well, love you, and say, I love you. You're great. Oh, you feel great. And sometimes disrespect you, and you're not, you're not good, and you're bad, and complaining against you, you feel down. If you have this faith in God's grace, if you have faith that your name is written on the book of salvation, you won't go like that. You won't be moved like that. Your joy is deeply rooted in the grace of God. It won't be moving. Their joy is not based on the results of their work, performance, of their ministry or mission. It's rooted on the grace of God. You know what? Satan can render our life time to time, don't they? Sometimes they make it very uncomfortable, unpleasant. <clears throat> they will control you sometimes. They try so hard, giving you the temptations. But you know what? Satan has no right to access to the book in heaven. There's no control over that. In that way, it cannot be changed. It can't be altered. It's not edible. And it took them. So rejoice. Not because you had done something really great. Rejoice because God wrote your book name in the book of heaven. Rejoice. Celebrate His grace. You know, Jesus does not require you to reach some spiritual goal or accomplishment to have your salvation. Not at all. To achieve the salvation, you don't have to do anything. This is just too good to be true. It is so true. This is Bible. This is Gospel. Don't try to achieve that. Just accept the grace to accept the truth that Jesus loves you no matter what. And because you are children of God, because of Jesus Christ in you, you're saved, period. Don't 
wrestle with it. Don't try to logically you know, think about it. No. Accept it. We just sang that song. God so loved the world. He gave His only Son. Whoever believes, they won't perish, but have eternal life. It's promise, covenant. We have, we just take it. It's freely given to you. You know what? We must practice as a continual rejoicing in the things God has done. Whether we experience success or not, as people of God, our name have been written down in heaven, and in this we rejoice. We can rejoice in the Lord, regardless of the circumstances around us.